This video is about a piece of hardware that people can buy and people having fears about it and I'm not here to poo-poo your fears. I'm here to tell you that you need to stop listening to Facebook and other postings on the internet that are full of crap. Today we're talking about the Gold Apollo AR ra rather than another one, the AL, the AR924 Pager. It's a four, three or four button pager, does everything a normal pager does. The current version has a battery you can charge in two and a half hours and it'll take you several months for it to go dead. It has a USB-C plug for that that is also used for communicating with the circuits and reprogramming it. Some versions have more frills than others. Some of them don't even connect, contain a connector. Some use a AA battery. At one time, I got paid to modify a bunch of these to get rid of the beeping noise so it ran on vibrate only or was dead silent and was basically disabled. How did this happen? It had a rechargeable battery, so people are jumping to the conclusion it had to be the battery. Let's get this out of the way. This is a blasting cap video. It's about how not to handle blasting caps because there are people in the industry who still do stupid things with blasting caps. Here's before the blasting cap. Single one goes off. Here's after. The explosion you saw on YouTube and on the internet would have been larger. Therefore, it's probably two of them. Remember, if you double the power of the charge, it doesn't double the diameter. So, odds are it was just a more powerful version of that blasting cap. And let's go back for a few. Yeah, that's about how big that has to be. There are many of them that are smaller. This one is one that's based on a burning fuse. A burning fuse one is going to have a different set of dimensions to it than the one that can be set off by electricity. Okay? So they can be much shorter. They can be slightly fatter. There are some I've seen and in fact worked with that seemed ridiculously big for what they were doing. Most of them are pencil sized. Okay? Now let's move on. Here's all that data there that I had. There is the video. I'll have a link to it. Let's move on to the teardown. This is the inside of one from 2016 that someone retrieved. It's actually older than that. Could be as old as before the year 2000. Pagers have been around a long time. They have obscenely long lifespans. They're very durable. They're very reliable. But every area you visit could technically possibly have a different standard for being a pager. Maybe it's using 5G these days in your area. Maybe it uses old school methods for analog. Maybe it's using cellular signals. So to make it to where they can make one design to rule them all, they'll make a main single board to handle most of the heavy lifting for the parts that can be put on one board. You might have noticed this board has a lot of empty space on it. That's a sign that the board is made to fit into the form factor, which is the case. A case has to have a certain minimum size and maximum size. To make it to where people are less likely to steal them, they make them very boring. That's absolutely part of the sales gimmick about pagers. They're so blasted ordinary, no one's going to steal it. This one uses two screws to take it apart. This is a teardown page. If you're looking it up, you look up Gold Apollo AR2, excuse me, 924 Pager Teardown or Dismantle. I only found this page, and it's for a previous version that used a AA battery. Let's move on. This features the fact that it comes with a supercapacitor instead of normally what would be a lithium battery coin cell that would be stuck in there with a the solder joint. This one's using a little supercapacitor. Again, they have bizarrely long lifespans on some of them. They never know which one's going to last longer. So using a supercapacitor, which technically does not have a shelf life, instead of one like a lithium that has a five-year shelf life, was a good idea. This is the front end of it. This one's old enough it uses a light bulb instead of LEDs. It has three buttons in this case and there's all sorts of circuits here. We have a couple of capacitors here that are fairly obvious. Let's move on. But this board handles the display, the keyboard, etc. Now we can't really see the opposite side of the of this G Apollo board but here's the chip and this is a single chip computer or a system on a chip. That means it has memory, it has programs that are run from read-only memory and in RAM, and it can be reprogrammed and updated because it needs to. If you're going to take this to a different market or sell it in a different country, you might want to put in a different font, a different language, have it do completely different things. Also, you could use a general purpose one like this for a board like this to run 
many, many functions. It might use a full keyboard on another design using the same chip. It would just be another board and it would have a lot of the same parts. Anyway, let's move on. We have three pins here and I think like 10 or something like here for this connector here. These are, these are sockets and if we look at the zoom in on it, these are solder joints and this is a surface mount header. And over here, this appears to be a surface mount header as well, but it only has three pins. It might also be all the way through. We will see in a minute. Anyway, this is the first surface of it, and we will be looking at that chip more detailed over here. Let's move on to the back side. Excuse me, that was the front side. This is the back side here. And you can see a very, very few of, of any of the pinouts, so we can't really look at it. Now let's look at the daughter board. This is the business end of it. This handles all the analog radio signals coming in tries to filter them, get it to a data stream that can be read through the 3-pin or 10-pin header. It has mounted on it a little tiny electric motor with an, a little weight on the, on the shaft. It has flying leads coming off the motor going into it. This is the pager motor. And this is most likely the speaker. I got paid good money to remove those, and I'll show you where the solder points are real quick. But right here we have a couple of crystal oscillators or other. We have some chip here that's probably designed to handle radio frequency switching. It might move in and out of circuit by switching capacitors or inductors or resistors to pick out a certain frequency group or whatever to decode or whatever. There's all sorts of parts here. This, according to the information here, is a ferrite rod right here, excuse me, right here, which we'll look at in a second. And this has uh, around it a bunch of very fine wire wrapped around it. Okay. And that is used to feed in the almost AM radio style signal. Over here is where the solder joints are for it. We have a trimmer capacitor here, here, and here. And this is all analog radio frequency stuff. Now these days, all of this can be simplified down to something that takes up just this much space. If they use cellular signals, it'll be a module in there. If they use uh, anything, it could be anything. That's why if you make one of these, you make them have a general purpose board that does the computer stuff and an analog board that handles all this other stuff. And you notice there's another chip on the back, etc. And here's the piece of tape holding the motor in place, so very uh, jankily. Now we're going to be looking at the software interface, but let's get up that image there. There's our image, and you can see all the parts in it. Very good zoom in on everything. There's the motor. This is an electric motor. And that's the beeper speaker, and I don't recognize what that part is there. So, somewhere along in here, somewhere, is either a set of very small pins that stick out that you improvise as being USB for reprogramming them, or this is before it had the USB. Now, the reason for that is the XACOM version might have included a slightly different design that included the I.O. port that they talk about here, and they give a description of. This is for prompts. You can edit how the prompts are done. Maybe you can change the language it displays. Then we have alerts and status. Again, it can alert you when the battery is low or high because it's using a AA battery. You can even change the boot screen, power up logo from Apollo to something else. And over here is the code and features. You can set the frequency range, change the baud rate, change the channel within the, the band, frequency of the pager. All of this information is software controllable. And this is from 2016? Well, no. It's from the year 1999 to 2012. They're just reusing it. Okay, that's how advanced these things have been for a long time. And again, their main selling point is they're boring looking. Nobody wants to steal them. They're reliable. They can be set to encrypt or not encrypt. And that is done through using a software interface like this and reflashing the BIOS. Now we're going to look at the pins. That pin there is right next to what is called a VIA or donut. Vias can be all the way through or dummied or ending. There's multiple layers in this board. This is the first surface we can look at. The next one under it is this one. It's a dark green. And then if we were to look at the other side, we'd see more circuit points. The point is, when we look at this close up, you'll notice that some of these vias might just be only one layer deep. Or they might go right through everything and only be on the other side. Some of these pins are different than the others. Some of these wires do not have anything they're connected to. Here's three here. Here's one right here. Here's a whole row of them. These single chip computers or systems on a chip 
are considered general purpose computers and have general purpose input and output. The output could be used to say, make a pulse every five seconds through three pins for each of the three buttons. And then another wire could act as a sensor to see when, not where, but when a button is pressed so it can figure out which button it is. That's how keyboards are scanned or individual sets of buttons. But if there's a bunch of extra pins here, is it a far stretch to believe that this could be reprogrammed? Now I'm gonna to get to a couple of points here. Number one, yes, they were probably hacked in name only, but this doesn't mean that if you own one of these, someone can hack it and then break into it and somehow overload the battery. By the way, saying overload the battery is, is like hack the Gibson and, and another, it's, it's one of those verbal tropes I hate. That's not really a thing. Don't stop using that expression. So what would have to happen that this would be able to set off a blasting cap? Somebody got in here, found an unused set of pins, made a utility routine to load into it, or just simply went into the software here and set a new setting, or just reprogrammed the BIOS by flashing it so that one or two of pins here could be fed, uh, let's say, a certain voltage if it receives a certain message. It would look for a message with exactly a certain set of words in it or punctuation, and then it would say, turn on this wire and leave it on continually. And then that could be used through, let's say, a transistor or anything, really, to then cause that to happen. That's probably what happened. That would amount to, uh, as you can see, open up the case, pull off the daughter board, get at this, find two wires, do two quick solder joints, let's say, reprogram it through the user interface through a USB cable, to have a new function, maybe even making it towards visible in this interface here that would just say uh, trigger second beep. It could actually be built in because this chip was used for another version that had another set of features. Maybe it had a dual tone beeper or something. Reusing an unimplemented set of pins and an unimplemented set of functions is very common for people to do when they're doing general purpose designs like this with a universal or almost universal chip. That's probably how it happened, and it was probably two blasting caps. And no, it doesn't mean that your battery is going to explode because someone doesn't like you. And yes, you will find videos about that right now, and their faults. Anyway, this has been a me trying to look up all I could about this pager and finding out that the AR one doesn't have a teardown, but the AL does, and it ran off of a light bulb, and it had a light bulb for lighting it up instead of an LED, and it used a, a throwaway battery for powering it instead of a rechargeable battery. But it's probably in the same range. And again, by now, the circuit board that you would plug in the daughter board would be very much smaller. It might even be a completely different design. There'd be plenty of room in here for somebody to do something like this, and it would have been pretty quick. In fact, it might be quick enough that they could have just plugged it in to the header and had a programming routine to do all this stuff through it. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Uh, this has been a video about the technical aspects of this and the most likely scenario of how it was done. And stop watching stuff off of Facebook. It's full of shit. Good day.